evil speakings, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corn. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Be ye are a chosen, excuse me, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of his visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the poor. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscious toward God endure grief, suffer wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto where ye call, because Christ <coughs> also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did not sin, neither was thou found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Does someone have the NIV version? <clears throat> For the, the chapter two? Mm -hmm. Chapter two, therefore rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. 
Like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. But to you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people, now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against the soul, against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves to the Lord's sake for every human authority, wherever, excuse me, whether to the imperial as the supreme authority or to the governors who are sent to him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should Silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, in reverence, in, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now... You have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Period. The end. All right, where are we going? We have a hand up. Everyone. Uh, 
here. It's all good. Yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah. First Peter chapter two. Uh, it reiterates, therefore rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by you, by it you will grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. First Peter 2, 1 through 3. And you know, in the outline, uh, let me regret. This is a letter that Peter, the apostle pen, I believe. Can you tell me who his audience was? We don't know. We'll, we'll tell well, you next week. <laughs> First Peter 1 says it's um, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. That's First Peter 1. And here it says uh, Peter addresses this epistle to pilgrims in a world that is growing increasingly hostile to Christians. These, Christ these believers are beginning to suffer because of their stand for Christ. And Peter uses this letter to give them counsel and comfort by stressing the reality of their living hope in the Lord. So this is to believers in those particular places, that I'm not going to per the word, per scripture. In the scripture reading, to see if I can start from the people that are in God, are in Christ, are accepting Him, and tell them how to act, why, why you're in it, what to expect, and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and all that. That's what I got. Okay. But I had to go to 1 Peter 1 to get that, the, the who. Who it was addressed to? Was Who was his audience? And the political climate at that point in time, the church or the new church was coming under political prosecution from yeah, non believers and from government authority. So when he says, therefore, rid yourself of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind, he's talking to the, the new church and saying, hey, you know, people are probably going to be doing some of this to you. So my advice is to understand that this is coming, but don't take any retaliatory act against this persecution. And in the 13th verse, it also lets you know that but to submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or in the governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put the silence the ignorance in the foolish man. So back during that time, there was the chief supreme or the Caesar, and then he would appoint governors over territories and provinces, and that's you know, that's the same thing that you found, you know, in terms of Pontius Pilate, you know, and and why he was so concerned about the report going back to Caesar that he wasn't upholding and doing the things that he that he felt that would be supportive of us and Caesar's group. I, I'm just trying to get a, a good understanding and, and, and a, a picture of what the you know, what the the political unrest in the in the church of the state would be at this time when he's writing this letter of encouragement and instruction. Would it be appropriate for the next yeah. the churches? Huh? Would that letter be appropriate for churches, church Christians today? I would.
don't think it would be. <laughs> because, you know, the you know, the law of the land says that certain things are legal. Just because the law says that they're legal doesn't mean that they're acceptable in the body of Christ. Well, verses, uh, verses 1 through 3, can, can that be done? Uh, I believe it can. I believe it can be done. So you believe that thir verse 13 can be done? Yes, I believe thir verse 13 can be done. To every ordinance of man. When you say, you know, when he's saying every ordinance of man, I think he's saying understand that there are going to be instructions given you know, that you know, are going to be governing your life and your lifestyle. You know, uh, that's the thing where, you know, when you know, that's why they created the conscientious objector. You know, you know, in, in terms of war. You don't you know, you I can be drafted and inscripted into the armed services doesn't mean that I need to carry a weapon. Well but it says submit to yourself to every ordinance of man. Well I, so so if the, if, if if the government said I want you to carry a gun then shouldn't you carry a gun per this scripture? Or get out. It didn't say get out yet. Can I make a can I make a suggestion real quick? I'm sorry. The the, the reason why my, my brother doesn't need an outline because he doesn't plan on using the outline. The reason why I made the outline is because I read a scripture way I read a, a scripture about three weeks ago from first Peter two and sixteen. And then Brother Rick wanted me to start at the top. So we're doing the same thing we did three weeks ago. We're going to verse 13, but you wanted me to start at the top. Yeah. Are you going to have us start at the top, or did I just do all this for nothing? Well, no, I, I would like for us to start and go through it for the outline. Yeah, I mean, that's well, what you then, asked me well, three then, weeks then, ago. Then. All right, sure. Let me submit myself to every ordinance. Of, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> there ain't no there. Don't be saying And the reason why I don't need an outline, I can go along. I can follow what I read, pay for what's going on. That's why I don't need an outline. Yeah. Right. Well, we we hey we 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 need your feedback, but we need it on the newborn babes. We need it on the living stones first before we get to and the ordinances. Right. And that's yeah. Right. And yeah. As you go through that, uh, we can uh, do that. Go ahead. You know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I can handle it. You know, like, sometimes your, your, your country have laws, and, and right now, this election we have right now, you know, uh, you know, a debate whether you know, abortion is legal or not, and, you know, and, and, that's a, and that's a great thing. Well, well it, they can determine whether they perceive it to be legal or not, <clears throat> but I believe that the word of God says do not kill. Well, but see, that's on 13. Let's go back to the one. I mean, that's what y'all just and, told you know, me. We want to jump down the... Yeah, that, that's... Okay, see... <laughs> See, I this, this is where people really get mixed up, and, and so do I. God says, do not kill. He has Moses' hand raised up, and they're just killing, they just wholesale killing the other people on the other side. Huh? Remember, when Moses' hand came down, they started losing, but they held his hands up. Which signifies he was, you know, holding them up to, uh, holding them there for God. Well, as long as he did that, they will win. Well, let me ask you this: since 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 we make a statement according to the commandments that it says that we God shall not or we shall not kill, and then we have a problem with Moses killing or David killing, then how do all of you have salvation if he doesn't order the Jesus to die? He did send Jesus to die, right? It is in the commandment, thou shalt not kill. So why have a problem with the killing that he ordered? God can do what he want to do, like Jimmy say. Like if it he, is. Like <laughs> Jimmy say, like it is. 
if he, he, no, no, he, is, if, he is the sovereign God. Okay, yeah, so, he is the sovereign God. so when he orders you to do something, do you have a choice? He did. He did. He ordered Moses to do something. He ordered David to do something. What do they do? You know what, Lord? They, talk, I, they, they were obedient. You know what, Lord? Uh, you you sent me up to the mountain to get these tablets, and I'm reading in the tablet to say that shall not kill. So I'm not gonna go kill. I'm just gonna go over to the neighboring countries and adopt their cultures. I mean, what was the reason? Bless you. Bless you. What, 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 what was the reason that God authorized Moses to kill those people? That's what we need to discuss. What was the reason that God authorized David to go into those countries and kill those people? Why did, why did God allow those men, Joshua, Gideon, why did he allow them, those people to enter into war? It's the same with King Saul. Why did he tell King Saul to go kill them, kill them, and kill everything that was there? Everything don't bring nothing back. Amalek's. And yeah, and you you you, you 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 you're right about Amalek's. that. The Amalek's. And he told him to, God told him to kill everything. Right. Everything and everybody is. And they got and, and David got in trouble because he didn't. No Saul. Saul, Saul got in trouble. He, he, yeah, he didn't. Yeah. Saul. What is what is what is this boy? Yeah. Correct. Well, God, 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 God stopped looking at him. God, that's what messed him up with God. I really got in trouble because he kept the women and, and, and the best set for himself. But it wasn't the best, Ed. It was the fact that he disobeyed. God it, came back and told him, hey, look what I tell you to do, man. Let me, let me add this. What Saul did was he left the king Agai alive. He was supposed to kill every living thing. That was the order. Yeah, right. And so when he brought the king back, King Agai is a descendant of the Amalekites. So then Samuel had to go and kill him. And he said, by this time, the, the bitterness of death has already passed. You were supposed to kill him in battle. Now he, you got him in a cage. Now he's saying, go ahead and kill me and get it over with. Now he don't even care about death no more. He wanted him killed in the middle, you know, when a person actually is pleading for their life. But he was a, he's, he's an Amalekite. The Amalekites wage war against the Israelites. That's why they were at war with them. The same, the same group of people you'll find in the book of Esther. Waging war against the Israelites. But that's Old Testament stuff. It's deep in there. <laughs> it's deep. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. he turned his back on Saul because of that incident. God right. did. Yeah, he did. Because he didn't kill everything. And he'll turn his back on people today if you don't obey. Mm. And, and, in his, and, in his and, own time. And, God chooses the time when he's going to turn his mm. back. That's not, well, that's not what I read. And, and, I read the face of the Lord is against evildoers. That's turning his back. The hand of the Lord is against evildoers. You know, we were saying that he... The reason that he did that because the fact that uh, when Moses brought the children out of, out of Egypt uh, uh, and, and they didn't he, they, uh, the Malachites attacked attacked those cities and God got upset about that. And I, I did read that in the Bible. <laughs> uh, but, but that's a fact. That's that's what God got, got upset. That's why he wanted that the, everything everything including the kids the the the, the babies the and I, he didn't want you to bring nothing out. So I brought out, brought out the the, the, the guy name that he just called. Uh, that guy. That guy yeah, brought out that guy, and then he brought out the animal, and then he fed, it, fed, his, fed his troops and all this kind of stuff. But what did Saul tell King? Tell God why he did it. It's not the point. You can't tell God. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> exactly. But Saul, that's what Saul told God. He thought, well. I'm not gonna kill. I'm not killed. What you want me to kill? So no, we're no. talking about killing now, and you, Ed was talking about well, 
Well, well, all these people is dying. We ain't supposed to kill. Thou shalt not kill, right? No, no. He 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 went and killed a lot of people. <clears throat> he but he killed. brought. But but when yeah, when Saul said he said what are these? He heard the cows and he heard the, the the noise of the animals. He said, what is this noise I hear? And he said he brought back the animals for a sacrifice. Right. And that's where the quote comes, obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. Right. He thought he could just do what he wanted to do True. and then offer a sacrifice True. and everything will be cool. Well, it don't work that way, right? It don't work that way. God knew what he was going to do before and he did it anyway. And yeah. one of the things about it is I was asking, I don't know, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he always gets away with that. You don't think God he knew? always gets away with it. I, I don't say that he didn't know. I'm just saying, I just, I mean, really, I'm kind of, kind of, kind of confused. About so you don't that. think he knew? God is an omnipotent God, and he knows all things. Okay, so is that everything? Uh, omniscient God, I say it like that. And he knows all things. He should have knew that he Saul, didn't know. That, uh, Saul was not going to do know. what he told him to do. The Bible says that the, God, the eye of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Every place. <laughs> so he knew. Uh, well, but he had to have a bad. For David to be king. He needed a path for David? He needed a what? And wasn't that the path for David to be king? Well, no, but that started with Samuel for David. Yeah. Uh, but well, it, go, it goes back but, further. But, for Eli and Samuel. But, 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 That's how God started kingships, basically, through Saul. Well, go ahead. Yeah, but when Saul did what he did, you know, maybe that was there. What, what David was a plan of God from the jump. And can we and can we stand on the principle or the scripture that says his way is different than our way as far as the east is from the west? So, I mean, yeah, we're trying to understand the <laughs> the rationale of God and we continue. That's one of the things we continue to struggle with. Yeah. In here, say, well, why God didn't do this and die? I mean, this is God has stated. Yes, yes, I am yes. the sovereign Lord. So, yes, sovereign God. So, let's, yeah, if He says it, let's live with that and not try and dissect. Dissect and decipher what is his meaning and the reason why yeah. we shouldn't or should do it. Well, well, let me make a statement real quick. Um, a lot of times in this study, we're between two thoughts. Either God knew everything or he didn't know everything. And we're between those two, right? Yeah. So, in my, in my study, the Lord knows the end from the beginning, but the creation of God which are human beings, are fearfully and wonderfully made. They have the ability to obey and to disobey. They can do, the people can do whatever they want to do. That's why you're created fearfully and wonderfully made. I have a dog at home. His only job is to be obedient to me. He doesn't know disobedience. He can do things, but he immediately has to submit. That's just... The functioning role of the dog. If you look in the book of Isaiah, it says the oxen knows his master, but the human doesn't know his master. He don't know he's supposed to submit to the creator. So therefore, when you see these instances in the scriptures, it's my understanding. It's not your understanding. It's my understanding that Solomon did what he wanted to do. Jeroboam did what he wanted to do. David did what he wanted to do when he committed adultery. He did what he wanted to do. Now, the creator, the creator renewed his spirit, but at that time, his mind and your mind as well as everybody else's mind in here can do exactly what they want to do. We're not robots. We have to submit to the creator. We have to want to, because if we don't want to, then that's your choice. It's not his will that anybody perish, but if you want to perish, then continue down the broad path. If you would like to be in his dwelling, stay on the narrow road. That's your choice. You have that ability. And that's why you read through scripture. We're wondering why this person did this and why this person did that. And God already knew what he was going to do from the beginning. And according to my study, 
the creator is going to instruct you to do something, and either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it, and you're going to reap what you sow. And, so and that's just my and that's just my understanding. And so you believe that he doesn't know everything. He doesn't know everything that the creation is going to do when it comes to the atmosphere and the way the winds is blowing and eternity and 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 when 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 he when the end is the end. Whoever made it, made it. Whoever didn't, didn't. It's just the parable of the ten virgins. Uh, uh, why didn't you go fill your jars with oil? Okay, well, the door is shut, and, and you were the foolish ones that weren't prepared. See, you, 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 in life, you can do whatever you want to do until your time run out. And whether you're going to heaven or not, the credit don't know. He, 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 he is sending messengers to you. He, he doesn't know. No, that, that's my that's my understanding. Yeah. That's not have to be yours. See, this, this is my right. understanding. This has been actually this is me and Avery's for years, right? Us. Yeah, because I believe he knows everything. Avery doesn't, and this is where we, you know, split hair. I mean, we go different roads. Like, right. Agree to disagree. disagree. Yeah, you know, because uh, I go to Romans nine and seventeen, where yeah. the scripture says, "Unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose, have I raised thee up." So my point is. He raises people up to do what he wants because this is God's thing. This is not man's thing. This whole thing is God's thing. So this is his instruction in verse 2 and 1. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind, like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by, <coughs> by, uh, so that by it, you may grow in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. He has given some, us instruction that you know, if we want to mature and grow in him, we must rid ourselves of this kind of behavior. If you want to. You don't have to, right? Do you have to? <laughs> uh, uh, that's, uh, and, and, and it says, and this, in, in the last stanza of verse of chapter 1, and this is the word that was preached to you. And, yeah, it's saying, hey, yeah, this Peter is writing his letter of instruction mm -hmm. of behavior to the new Christians and saying, hey, this is what, if you adhere to these things, then you're going to grow and you're going to understand and be able to mature in Christ. In Christ. Right. But you definitely don't have to. Plenty huh? Plenty yeah, you know, right. It's your choice, right? You, what, you, what does God fit in your choice? Does He fit in anywhere there? Only if you want Him to. He created hell. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. does is, does He fit in terms of what you do, what you don't do? It's oh. like Victor said the other week that until He was dead, I, I mean, until He was thought He was dying, He didn't come to the Lord. But He came after He thought He was dying. So that was on God. God is in is complete control of everything that we do, who we are, what we are, whether we have great health, whether we don't have great health. That's all in God's hands, all of it, everything. He's the one that does the choosing. This is why Romans 9 for me, that's why he says, I made some for honor, and I made some for dishonor. God can do whatever he wants to do. If that's the case, okay, let's just say <laughs> we are robots, Dr. Dunning. Let's, um, we all, God made us all. Boom. Then shouldn't he have made us all the same way? Should we all be the same thing? But we're not. Some people suffer from this illness. Some people suffer from that illness. Some people don't suffer from illness at all. Where did it come from? Who's in control of that? I'm listening. Come on. The sovereign God. Stuff oh, you, well, that's the stuff you eat. Stuff you drink. What, what he made, the stuff he made. It, look, look, I was having a conversation with my brother today, and he was talking about his girlfriend who smoked, and he said that because she smoked, and what I mean, eventually that maybe her lungs, that she may get sick from cancer. I'm like that. I said, well, my grandfather smoked until he was 90-something years old. So there is no absolute. And God, he does what he wants. It's his thing. This is, see, now I think, well, to me, this is for Jimmy. What we get off is we think we got some control over this thing that he has got. Romans 9 lets you know that he's in complete control of this thing. 
Well, I did. That's what we do. Do you remember what you were about to say? Yeah, you know, you know, sometimes I disagree with with some stuff that I I do in the Bible, or certain stuff that I don't want to follow. You know, and one of them is is that when Peter and Paul both talked about. You know, uh, follow you. Uh, you know, do what you. Uh, Those that have rule over you, what yeah, they command yeah, you right. to do. Right. But Jen, you know, I don't want to do that. Okay. You, you know, I I don't want to do. If, uh, and no no no, I, I don't want to follow an agenda. What what? And oh, no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, what, 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 I don't want to follow an agenda of a leader that I think is out of left field. I don't want to do that. Now, when uh, when the Hebrew boys when when when, uh, when they when they heard the music and they were supposed to bow down, they didn't do that. The, the people set them up, so and they played the music, you know, because they knew when they uh, they didn't bow down. Yeah, they had they had told the king, you know, hey these boys that you think so much of, hey, they don't follow you. They, right, they pray to God, they not to you. Yeah, them. yeah, to they, they don't follow your decree, and, and the king. He couldn't go back on his word to them, right? So he said, "That's the You know, I, I mean, you know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And and so you can't follow. You know, you you just you can't just follow nearly willy uh, anything that somebody else said. Some people do, yeah. but you don't, because you, you said you're strong and never. People do that. I, I, I want to say that whatever happens to me is it, it, that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm so strong, but, you know, I, I want to be responsible for that. Mm -hmm. you know, So <clears throat> we are, and it says, and at the end of this, 2, 1, and 3, it says, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Yeah. And, yeah, and then there is a reference scripture in Psalms 38, 4. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Lust is the one. 34 and 8. What did I say? 38 and 4. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's Psalms 34 and 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes reference in him, refuge in him. And so, yeah. And, yeah, and, <coughs> yeah. and that, yeah. And one of the questions that comes out of the outline is how do you taste? How do you taste? Yep. Yeah. Uh, how do you taste that the Lord is good? You know, like like that scripture right there. Crave pure spiritual milk that you may grow in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And when I think about that, a lot of people may not even have thought about that or not even have tasted that the Lord is good. Um... Is it, Coming a, up, is com it a physical phenomenon or is it a, a spiritual? It's a spiritual. Of course, it's a spiritual phenomenon. But, but the scriptures uh, coming up, I was always told to stay out of the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, if you look at the references, it references the word being sweet as honey. And the honeycomb. Right. So I mean, so how? I mean, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Okay. I mean, how do you experience that? Because the fact is, once you taste and see the word of God, once once you once you actually taste and see the word of God, that that it, it 
takes control. I, I studied this paper also, and I went all through all, every scripture. I wish I'd have brought the Bible that I, I, I worked on. But the bottom line is that, that once, you, once you taste and see and get this, get this into your system, you'll be a whole new person because you, you have tasted and you have been into something that, that's altogether different. That become, you become a whole new person, changed, a, a, a spirit to change. Okay, uh, is, is well, it something like the horn of salvation? Well, here, well I, here's what I'm looking at. The, the word says taste, mm -hmm. and, and, and both of you guys are given excellent, uh, you know, ways of going about it. But let's take the word taste out and use other things that will mean by taste and see that the Lord. What does taste really mean? What are we doing to taste the Lord? Experience. What, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, are the parts of our life that we have yeah, 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 experienced true. the Lord's kind And what are we Lord. doing to experience each I, day? I, I accept. Well, how do we, I, I, how, for the sinner, how do you do it in the yeah, first place? Living in his conscience. How do you get it in the first place as a sinner? Somebody that does a no problem, of course in the room we can accept it. But for, for Mo Job is walking down the street. They've never tasted it. Exactly. How can he get to a point where he can taste it? He, he, wait, 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 wait. He until you believe. How did you taste when you was a sinner? You didn't. How did you get to the taste part? Well, be, being born in the church for the most part and hearing it. And it, God knows how to reach you because I had heard it all my life, basically. And at 17 years old, um, I was like, oh, I know, I know there's something. I'm not really into it. It's not cool to be a Christian. That's where I was. That's not cool. But I, my, I've said it before, because of a young lady who I cared for, I jumped in and tasted it and started studying it. And, and wow, found out that it was, this is cool. Everything. It wasn't giving me everything I wanted, but I, I accepted it through belief and faith in God. God reaches us all in different ways. <clears throat> and just a, a arbitrarily take, the, the, Joe Blow down the street has to be reached by God to even want to taste it in the first place. Yeah. In, um, in Psalms 19, verse 7, it reads, The laws of the Lord are perfect, refreshing to the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Now, I wrote this down. I said, the laws of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, the commands of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the decrees of the Lord are supposed to be more precious than gold and sweet than honey. But the only thing I ever hear is we're not under the laws of Moses. We don't have to read the laws of Moses. The laws are a bunch of do's and don'ts. Why do I have to read that? If Jesus already came and died for my sins, I don't even have to go back and read that stuff. A guy told me in a barbershop, I don't even know why people read the Old Testament. That stuff is not valid. It's obsolete. It's no good. Well, but that's a person that doesn't know, doesn't have an understanding of God. No, that's the point. He's never right. tasted. I, these are these anybody that would instruct you not to read the first five books of the Bible or anything in the Old Testament has never tasted, and they are restricting you from tasting and learning the scriptures. You know, people. Take a look at my shirt. Can I, can I, what, what, when people say that, that they, uh, I think they took what they said. This is what I, what I think they, they, they are talking about. When they say that they don't, uh, not under the laws of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. I feel that they're saying that we are, since I believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus has come and died for me already. That I'm not under conviction that, because everything in the Old Testament says you go on. Don't, don't die. But the Old Testament is here for us to learn from. It, 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 it revives and, and, and lets you know. You've got to read the Old Testament to get, to, to get a full understanding of the Word of God. 
the, 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 but the thing is, you're not under the jeopardy of being, because you believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus came and died for us. God sent Jesus just for him to die for us. So that we wouldn't have to. So everything in the Old Testament, if before Jesus came, if you, if you looked at another woman uh, or you did sin, you died. You, you go to die. If you steal, you die. You, you kill, you die. And, and all of, and everything was like that. But Jesus already can't come and die for us now. So we, if we have saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, we are, we are under, under, the, under the cognizance of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our uh, the stand between how you, how you say it? So, I so, I was, my memory was like he's he 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 as good as it used to be. Huh? He's so, our, so he's what, our advocate. What do we do? Between what, the, what do we do? Law. What do we do with the laws? You, you study it to get the, 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 get the, the, the absolute of it but the, but, but the bottom line is that and like Bishop said, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you better read the law. Because 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 it's better to be under under the law than if you're not going to believe in Jesus Christ. If you're not going to believe in Jesus, but the bottom line is we supposed to believe in okay. Jesus. Okay, he, 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 he you? said that I, I didn't come to destroy, but, but fulfill. Right, right. So, so, right. so, right. so, so but the law, do you the law believe, has a basis. It's a like building stone to do Jesus you, Christ. Do you believe? Do, do you believe or think there are people? Who believe in Jesus who have never read the laws of Moses? Probably. Possibly. Those same people. Those same not those. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't. Huh? <laughs> Certainly not to the same understanding of some people. But they don't understand the foundation which yeah. Jesus Christ is, 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 is stood up. You know, yeah. You know, he is the building. You know, it says he is the, the, the cornerstone that the people have rejected. The builder has rejected. You know, the, you know, the law is the some of the foundation and 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 people will continually reject Jesus Christ because it doesn't confer, you know, that's what that's part of the Jewish problem. So this is my question. Just though just just a regular question. People can believe in Jesus without reading Moses. Yes. Yeah, you I'll say yes. Okay. I'll say yes. You have to look at it in terms of when God sent what he sent, he sent to the Israel to Israelites, right? What he his saying? whole thing was his teachings and how he wanted people to be was only to the Israelites. Law of Moses. When God sent okay. his teaching. And I'm, I'm just said, I'm just asking. He sent, it to, he sent it to the Israelites. The Torah, the law of Moses. The, to the Israelites. Okay. Nobody else. Okay. In the world. Okay. There were people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And those teachings weren't to those people in the world. He didn't mean for them to read. Well, no, but they weren't to those people. Even Jesus told the disciples, don't go to the Gentiles and to the Samaritans. Right, right, right. And my point is, is that we're looking at it in terms of people, the children of Israel, who got the law, who were given all this information, who God expected to be a certain way. He didn't expect them from the rest of the world. Can I read something? Come on. Acts, the second, uh, not Acts, uh, Romans, the second chapter. And I'm going to ask the question before I read it. Who are these people? <laughs> who are these people? Acts 2, verse 12. Excuse me, I, I, uh, Romans 2, verse 12. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secret thoughts, secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. So, who are those people? 
the rest of the world, the of Gentiles. The world. Absolutely. So the same laws that the Israelites had was also from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. It just wasn't in their community. The word got out. That's how Red. That's how Rahab knew who 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 Jehovah was. That's how she hid the spies. Well, Your God parted the Red Sea. So that message is written in the Torah. That made it to her. There are a lot of Gentiles in the genealogy of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> what were you starting to say about your shirt? I was saying that my shirt is a, uh, a <coughs> Juneteenth shirt, right? So, you know, the history of Juneteenth and so forth. What I was saying is, is that sometimes in the, in the black American community, uh, today we can want certain things that applies to the history which is reparations and sometimes blacks can go back and do all of the history of their ancestors from slavery but when it comes to the Bible you can't go back and read the history which is in the first five books of the Bible if a politician wants to be a politician They'll go back and read all of the histories of the founding fathers from the Constitution, but when it comes to the scriptures, they won't go back. For whatever reason, I don't know. But they believe, but, but they have this belief. The, within, the, within the belief, within the Old Testament, is actually God giving his testimony that I'm going to bring this particular person in that they believe in. And if they haven't read the testimony of God, which he says what he's going to do, they just believing in something that's in the New Testament, but they don't have no foundation on what they believe in. Well, why do they need a foundation? If, from what you, the scripture you just read, you said that the, wherever, everybody else in the world, they have this written in them anyway. Why you gotta come back and read what you what was taught in to the Jews if you already have this inner law? Why you gotta go back and read then? If you, if the, I understand the children of Israel because that's who they gave it to, that's who everything came from. But the rest of the world, from the beginning to the end, from then over there, if they have law within them, why they gotta come back and read this? Sorry, I don't, I can't understand that question. Well, I understand that. Can we read that passage you, you just read again in the, in the New Testament, in the uh, King James Romans. Version? Romans 2, uh, 12? Yeah, yeah, Romans, Romans 2, 11 through 16. Uh, for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many have, for as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many have and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Amen. For not the hearer of the law are just before God, but the doer of the law shall be justified. Mm -hmm. For when the Gentile which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the means, <clears throat> the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So that's nature. Well, was given by who? What nature? The, the nature of the law. What, uh, it, what is it? What is human, it? human nature is either to obey or to disobey. And who do you come from? The nature. Your ability to do this and do that. That's how we were created. By God, right? 
Of course. So He's the creator. it all came from him. It's all from him. He does the choosing of who gets what. He chose the Israelites. He could have chosen the Amalekites. But because of what he, this is what he did. And Jesus, I, bear, Jesus confirmed it when he said, evidently, everybody in Gentile Samaritan didn't know stuff. Because he says, don't, don't tell them. He I get also, to, he, he also said that I am going to take the heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. And the spirit of truth will write down and you will do that which comes from that spirit. And that's going to give you the motivation and the unction to follow him. Not the law. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. The spirit of God mm -hmm. is going to accomplish it. To each individual. To each individual. Yes, sir. I agree. But yeah, you know, and, and we can debate. Good, hey, good, we, good, hey, good, good job. <laughs> we're gonna move you back. want you you want him over. Good job. <laughs> no, no, it, what? It is what it is, and everything. You know, you and, and like you said, Avery, you said from the job. That's the two schisms in the room, basically. Whether God knows everything and whether He doesn't know everything. You fall on that side where He doesn't. I fall on the side where He does. And that, and that's and I think that's where we were always. That's what, what we will always find disagreement. Right, but I, I think that when when we're going through chapters and verses, I think we're just, you know, we're 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 talking about uh, people not going back and looking at the history, which is a human nature, and I think that when we when we say certain things, I think your perspective, you're beating it in. You're saying, hey, okay, hold on a minute, who did this? Whose nature is it? Is it? Is it this nature? God did it all. So you're more of you beating it into the, to my psyche. Also, you know, I'm making, I, when we said rich, I you want him over. Yeah, yeah. I, he I, don't I, really I, want to agree with that. He just is agreeing with well, that. I, the scripture says it. The scripture <laughs> says it. Read, read, read it to me again. What, what you got? Let, let me hear. Because you said, you quoted from Ezekiel, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right. That wasn't, okay. So yeah, you yeah. quoted from Ezekiel about the creator Putting a new heart in you, right? Uh -huh. Okay. The 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 the, pro the prophet Isaiah, which Jesus quotes from, which is another reason why it's hard to believe New Testament Jesus without foundation, is because Jesus is quoting from the prophet Isaiah when he says the heart is calloused, like the callous you get on your foot or the callous is callous. People see things, but they don't see. They hear yeah, things. They, they they're perceiving they the wrong thing. Their heart is... <laughs> right. They're perceiving the wrong things. They don't even understand what they heart. They just understand them by what they perceive. So therefore, in here, we have a perception. Okay, hey, I'm looking at the commandments. God said, do not kill. But look over there. There's a man of God killing. That's a perception you're looking at it from a lens of a human lens and you're not looking at it as God has instructed this man to do something. And then we're going back to, well, God already knew that when he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, they were going to disobey anyway. The, the, first of all, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were already... Among Egypt represents the world. They were already in sitting bondage. around in bondage, sitting around pots of meat in slavery. When they get into the wilderness, they need to get their mind. They have a physical freedom, but their minds are still oppressed, just like people today. People are oppressed. That's why Jesus comes in Luke 4 and 18, quoting from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has sent me to, to re, uh, release to, uh, 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 prisoners, to release the prisoners, recovery of sight, and set the oppressed free. During that time, they weren't under the Babylonian captivity. During that time, they weren't under the Egyptian slavery. No, all the Israelites were walking among the land free. The Egyptians, the, when they were in Egypt, right? No, no, okay, they were under oppression there. Then they disobeyed again. Then they got hauled off under Nebuchadnezzar, right, under right, right. Babylonian captivity. Then once they were exiled and they were free, 
Now they had Rome and Caesar and they had the oppression of taxation, but nobody was in prison. So when Jesus comes in Luke 4 and 18, he's setting the prisoners free. Now, back in the wilderness, they were free, but they weren't mentally free. That's why he led them in the wilderness, causing them to hunger. Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. To teach them, you don't just live off of bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He's trying to teach them to be obedient, but they didn't want to be obedient. That's Everybody has the ability to do that. That's why something as simple as perception, I'm going to cause venomous snakes to bite you and you're going to die. But whoever look at this snake, that Moses is going to put a bronze snake on the pole. Whoever look at that snake, you're going to be healed. Now, a person just look at that snake and say, hey, look at that snake. That sounds stupid. They didn't make it. But some people said, you know what? Moses, we know Moses is led by God. If he say, go look at that bronze snake on the pole, I'm going to look at that bronze snake on the pole. And they will say, that's their choice. They have an ability, but we can say, hey, God already knew who was going to look at the snake and who wasn't going to look at the snake. Uh, if you see a, a paramedic right now, you're going to see a snake on the pole. If you see you go in the elevator, you're going to see a snake on the pole. What does that mean? That is a, that's a worldly example and a symbol of medical help assistant. Yep. Something that took place way back then, and some people's eyes still can't see that to this day. Somebody pointed it out to me. They said, man, you see that snake on the pole in your elevator? And I said, I ain't even, never noticed that. Some of y'all going to be looking for it now. <laughs> Look at a, a, a doctor or a medical or paramedic. <laughs> Look at the ambulance go by. You're going to see a snake on a pole. That's Look, right. at, Look at God. <laughs> That's, that, that's going on today. Even yeah. The, even the Greeks did it. Look at God. Look how he set everything up. How he set everything up. He set it all up. Even what you just talked about. God set it up. Hey, he, I, mean, I believe that's what that is. You know, and, and, this is, and this is how we have true belief. Because it's placed on the bedrock of God's interaction with real human beings. He's dealing with real people like me and you. He's talking to Abraham saying, hey, if you leave your father's country and your father's household where they worship in idols, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Abraham has to make a decision. He didn't know Abraham was going to go. Especially offer your son. Well, that's, just, that's me. Especially, no, especially offer your son. Okay, look. I, 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 look, you tell me I'm going to have a son. And then, I was, and, then, and then my wife say, the Lord take it too long with this promise that he made us. So let's go lay down with Hagar. I'm going to give Hagar to be your wife. And Okay, Abraham. Say, uh, did God know that? I don't know. Now, yeah, hey, okay, yeah. So yeah, me, he didn't know. So he go over there. So then when God come back to Abraham, he say, where's Sarah? And he says, by this time, next year, you're going to have a son. And now Abraham is pleading back and forth with the creator. You ain't supposed to be able to talk back to the creator. But he's saying, hey, why can't Ishmael be the one who, who, who you bless? He said, because I already told you, by this time, next year, you're going to have a son. Now, he said, right. Now, 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 later on, Ishmael, about 12, 13 years old, he said, no, not Ishmael, uh, Isaac, I don't know how old they are. Later on, no, no hold on. I, he, he say, go offer your one and only son. Yeah. He said, go, go offer your son. Now, you told me to go look up at the stars, and if I could count them, so shall your descendants be. You told me to go count the dust, and if I could count them, go count the sand, if I could count them, and then you're going to tell me to kill the sun. How am I going to get all these descendants if you're going to kill? It's only so many seeds they can plant. How am I going to have this many descendants? It don't make sense. But Abraham, what it says in Romans 4, he didn't waver in unbelief. That's Abraham's choice. That's why Abraham became the father of many nations, because of his belief. And he kept moving forward. He didn't waver back and forth, tossing, tossed back and forth by every wind of teaching, <laughs> like some people do. Not you hear it? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Not because it was a plan of God. Not because it was a plan of God. Not to me. Okay. 
Well, not to me. Well, I mean, he. It, it, I'm saying that the, it's it's based on our belief. When we read this, our belief is based on the foundation or the bedrocks of God's interaction with human beings. All of these people from Jacob. He's dealing with these people. He telling Jacob. He said, "Man, he 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 hit Jacob's hip." All in the plan of God. Look at uh, Nathan. Look at Nathan. Uh, well, look at Nathan and David. I mean, God knew exactly what David had done. Well, and he told Nathan, "Go, hey, go tell that man what's going. On. Go, go to him." God knew when he did it. He knew before he did it. When well, he, he went out there and did he, with Bathsheba type of thing, God knew, and he knew what he was doing and killing. Uh, right, all of that. God knew, and so he sent because it's God's plan. He sent Nathan to David and say, "Go tell you know, go tell him, go talk to the dude." Because you know why? Because God knew. You remember in the book of Numbers, remember that donkey with Balaam? It should have been a donkey right there before David slept with Bathsheba. It should have been an angel that said, "Don't you do that?" No, no, because you can't tell God what he's gonna do. This Don't is his plan. This is God's plan. Right. He, he worked it out the way he wanted to work it out. He could have, like you said, he but said, that's against. That. It's like that when he walked out there, God could have sent Nathan before he walked out and said, "Hey." Man, look, God saw you looking at that woman. Don't do that. Don't do right, that. Right. But because God had a plan, he let it go. He let it go when it came to killing the right. And then God said, okay, now I want to intervene. Now I'm going to jump in, and I'm going to send Nathan to tell David, hey, man, this is what this, what, you know, what should you do with this guy? What David said, you should kill him. Well, that's God part of, part of God's plan. See, see, to me, that okay. makes, to me, that makes... God's word not invalid. It makes what? it not true. Because, because adultery is in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. So, once again, like Ed said, he said don't kill. Why you let people kill? He said don't commit adultery. Why you let David do that? Because Rick told you that earlier in the conversation. Because what, what, what did you say, Rick? His what? His ways? Our, our ways. His thoughts. Our, 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 our. So can God do whatever you want to do? What do you want to do? Because okay. He's sovereign. You should. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You should. You, you should what? quote. Hold on. You should quote that. That's Isaiah fifty. Should be fifty six and ten. You should. You, you should read it, quote it, and that way the group can have a, a great understanding because that's talking about his word raining down from heaven. Like rain rains down from heaven, creating seed for the eater, so that his word can go through into your mind and your mind, and his 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 accomplishments, his purpose can be accomplished. It is his his accomplished his, his purpose. purpose. His purpose. So God's purpose, purpose can be accomplished. God's purpose. Okay. All right. right. All right. He is part, and and we should understand what his purpose is. It's not his purpose for anyone to perish. But for everyone to receive eternal and that's life. That's why we don't understand his ways because he knows full well. He knows full well people are going to perish. Knows it. Even though he said what he said, he knows full well people are going to perish. Okay. If we believe God is omnipotent, if we believe he knows everything from the beginning to the end, he knew, he knows people are going to perish. And that's what and I haven't done this in a while. Go ahead. Romans 9 17. Or, 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 let's start at um uh, it's not, 13. It's not 56 and 10. It it's was, not 56 and 10. 55? Check 55 and 10. It was said that the elder should serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but he saw have I hated. Well, shall we say then, is there unrighteousness is there? with God? Question. Sorry. God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy 11. on whom I will have mercy. 55. God, mm -hmm. It's 55. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. The I being God. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I mean God. So when it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, you can probably put Judas in there, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Thou will say then unto me, Why does he find fault? For who hath resisted God's will, his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? 
Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel under honor and another under dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known and endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fit of destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy, which he had for afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. This scripture says to me that God is, and it's just maybe it's just me. <laughs> That God is in complete control of everything. That he makes everything. He decides what's going to happen. That's what it says to me. Now, I, every, you know, he, he and I are the ones that, that, that yeah. Isaiah, so, Isaiah 55 and 6 begin. Thank you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thought. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, yes, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it, without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for it which I sent it. You will go out in joy to be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow in the pine tree. Instead of the briar, the, missile, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign, which will not be destroyed. So what was his word sent out for? Because in that scripture you read, his word is going to be sent out into all of the earth, and it will not return to come him. All, come all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you will have no money. That's come buy money. and eat, come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good. For your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Hear me, that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made a witness to the people, a leader and a commander of the people. Surely you will summon nations to you know not, and the nations do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. He, for he has endowed you with splendor. And then it goes, seek the Lord so he may be found. Right. So that's what I'm, I'm still asking about 11. What word doesn't return? Which, what is the, what's going out from the Lord's mouth that will not return back to him empty and will accomplish or achieve his purpose? For, furthermore, why do we even have to seek the Lord? If we are vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor, we, we shouldn't even have to seek. We shouldn't even have to forsake our ways if our ways are not his ways, his ways. We, 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 don't, we don't have a way. It's just, we're just in line with what his way wants us to do. Unless we actually have a way. Then, then we got to forsake a way. And, and you, Jimmy, you were saying earlier about we're not robots. No, I didn't say that, but David said that. No, no, you said, you said one or the other. You said, you said the word robot? You robot? We, we would be robot. God made us each in the I didn't say that. I okay. You were talking about healing and you were talking about sickness and things of that nature. And you said, why would God allow 
a 99-year-old man to smoke from right. Right. and a 30-year-old die from cancer, right. possibly, I didn't according say. to doctors, I did smoking or whatever. Right. Why would you do that? Unless we're all robots uh, under him, which we're not. So my point, going back to what you're saying, is God's in control of everything. We are robots then. And, and why do we seek him out? Why do we read this word? What's the purpose of seeking him out if he's in control of everything and all we got to do is walk every day and do what we're going to do? Because he already knows, and he's in control. Mm -hmm. I believe that. No, I'm saying I know you believe it. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. yeah, he was actually well, disagreeing what's with the it. Purpose well, it's, it's a, Jerry, that goes back to what what, the, what Avery and Rick were talking about in terms of his ways are our ways and our his thoughts are our thoughts. He does what he wants, man. This is God. See, I believe God does whatever he wants. This is his thing. This whole thing is his thing. And I think Romans 9 bears it out. He lets you know who he is, who we are, and what we are in this thing. And so and so and listen, I agree with every bit of that. But I ask you this question. Mm -hmm. If he's in charge of everything, mm -hmm. why would he not then to each and every one of us? Say, I need you to come to me. I need you, just like it's saying in here, I need you to believe. Right. Why would you not do that? I can't tell you God's thoughts. Why can't man. you tell me that? I can't tell you because I don't know the mind no, of God. Because it says it right here to do that. No, no, no. You should do everything in this book. I agree with that 100%. So but I also open, know. So he has created us for those doors open to come back to him. Because in order to be with him again, I have to have that relationship with him. What do you mean to come back to him? Were you ever away from him? Absolutely. I mean, well, 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 I mean, well, well what my, my point is, okay, well, he made you exactly the way you are, right? Did okay. he make you not to be with him? Did he make you not to be with God? If you're born in the sin. I was born in sin. So then he made you in sin, right? I was created in sin. He made you. Adam. Okay, you can use any words you want. Because Adam, made, he, but then he made he made that right. Yeah, but that's a that, that that's an unfair question. No, it's not. No, can, can I explain it? You. No, no. I, I, I just I want was to... created in no. sin because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And Correct. Did, and did God Correct. know that Adam and Eve was going to disobey? Jared. Amen. He did know. He, he did know, right? He, 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 he did. did. And, he, and what did he do? And he made made procreation. Anyway. Yeah, he made procreation in Christ. To get mankind back to him. Before the foundations of the Before world. Before there are foundations of the world. So who's thing? So it was God's thing from the jump. I, I, I disagree well, on Peter, record, but you guys can keep going. First Peter, first chapter says, you know, before he was, Jesus Christ was preordained before the foundation of the world. Which means before there was any sin, Jesus was preordained to come. First Peter. You know, when we when, when we use the word Jesus. Oh, it's Christ. Okay, Christ. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. When we use the word, well, if, if you if Christ you if, if, if you change it, it says them both there. Okay, so, so on, this, on, this is what I'm saying. When we use the word Jesus, you won't find the word Jesus in the Old Testament. You don't have to. No, you know that. You don't have to. Find uh, it there. This this is the point I'm making. Uh -huh. Jesus is an earthly name. The name have a meaning to rescue, to save. His name was actually in a. His name actually, yes, his name actually in the Old Testament, Isaiah 7, 14, is Emmanuel. Christ Emmanuel God means God with us. Okay. So when you're referring to lambs, uh, 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 particular vessels, you, you, act, you, you act like we're, we're actually talking about... I'm not look. I don't have to be careful. Oh, well, I, I mean, look. I'm not in. Look, I'm not in fear. I'm come not a robot. I can say what I want to say. Right. But you see, Scripture still says what it says. And, it and says, I'm, 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 I'm following verse, Scripture. Let's see what I'm about to say. With the let's, precious let's, blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish, is it Jesus and name in there? Who verily foreordained, who was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world. You, anybody else doesn't know that that's Jesus? No, no, it's not. No, no, I don't. I'm, I'm well, sorry, you know, I don't. Well, you no, know, but I'm. No, Jesus no. Was Jesus in the Old Testament. What, I, what I'm, what I'm, what, the, the, what I'm saying is, is that people treat the name. Jesus and the person like it's an actual Picasso person. Picasso, like like a person that you actually have seen or known before or there is some uh, historical remembrance of him. Nobody has ever seen Jesus before. 
They, the pictures that they have are not true. True. Okay. So now, according to uh, now according to Second uh, Corinthians, we know no man after the flesh. Even though we knew Jesus that way from a worldly point of view, we know him no longer that way. Jesus has always been the manifestation of God's word through the Old Testament that was born according to what God said in Isaiah 7, 14. The virgin is going to give birth and conceive, give birth to a son. God said it. He did it. He's the manifestation. And then the angel Gabriel said, name him Jesus because he's going to be the one that saves his people from sin. He's always been Everything that God has placed in him, he's been a seed, a seed that will be planted into, in that scripture, seed that will be planted into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, just as Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. And when God raised him, he's going to be the first fruits of all that slept. So now he is the true vine. And if you are connected to those words, you are branches in that vine. But we treat it like it's an actual physical person okay. that we actually, George Washington or something. Okay, first, first Peter, starting at the 13th. Yeah, you can re I've read it several times. Word of the loin. Well, this is for the room. Not be oh, I'm sorry, I'm, my bad. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former, lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And he called on the Father, Bless you, who, have, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning, fear and fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with the corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now for me, mm -hmm. and what I read, he's talking about Jesus Christ there, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Now, if, if, if there are people in the room that feel differently about that, I, I want to hear, what do you, who do you think he's talking about? Well, he's talking about word. Christ means anointing. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to proclaim the gospel to the poor. Christ is the word. The word is the one that brought the world into existence. And the world is going to die on that cross that day. And then the Lord is going to bring forth a new birth. And if you follow Jesus in the regeneration, and if you enter a new way of life that is the new beginning but when you when, when you all attach are, when you attach it to all things become new. it's not physical it's all not physical the word became flesh and dwelt among right. uh, 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 it was manifested in the last times 40 it's, it's there uh, but, okay. We didn't get through the outline, Joe. Oh, don't worry about it. Did you expect that? You couldn't have expected that. Hopefully we'll be here next Tuesday. One, two, and three. Come on. We'll be here next Tuesday. We will be. Avery will be here next. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm leaving for the weekend. Oh, okay. I'm leaving for the weekend. Yeah, It's this weekend. Okay, okay. So bring the outlines back, gentlemen, and we'll continue. Uh... Brother Keith, how you yeah, doing? Yeah, good. How you doing? Really good. I'm doing good. Pray us out. All right. <laughs>